Welcome to Buckets. This is Action Network's basketball betting podcast presented by FanDuel. I'm Maria Marino, joined once again by Action Network writer Brian Fonseca. Brian, how you doing on this Tuesday? Doing pretty well. We got a fun WNBA game last night and also a lot of FIBA World Cup stuff uh, that I've been betting on. But very fun times <laughs> in basketball, even though the NBA is not around right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Super fun time. Speaking of... I was at the game last night, Aces visiting the Liberty. Uh, Liberty win again. So technically, when you look at the standings um, in the season series, they're two and two because uh, the Commissioner's Cup doesn't count toward the standings. But we know really uh, that the Liberty are three and two against the Aces this season. Uh, What were your thoughts on the game? I mean, it's funny that the Commissioner Cup one is technically the one that doesn't count, even though to me that was maybe the most telling of all the games that they've had uh, mm-hmm. this season. Because they were but, on the road. Yeah, and I, I like the Liberty matchup really well with this team, you know, right. and as somebody who's a New Yorker who remembers the days of, you know, we talked about it last time, Tita Charles, mm-hmm. Bria Harley, before that, Becky Hammond, Leilani Mitchell, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you want to go real back, like... This is one of the best teams that this city has had in the WNBA. And for them to be taking it to the Las Vegas Aces, who were the favorites coming into the season. And we all sort of circled on the calendar every game that these two would play because this looks like the WNBA Finals preview. Um, I just hope it happens because we can get a definitive answer as to who is actually better. I think the Aces, you know, while they've had a slightly better regular season, the, the Liberty match up really well with this team. And the way John Quill Jones has been attacking the glass since the All-Star break has been telling. And Sabrina Ionescu is a star. Courtney Vandersloot had a big game. Like, Brianna Stewart's Brianna Stewart. I mean, what else could you say about this team? I just – I can't wait for the playoffs in about two weeks at this point. You know, me too, and you make a good point. Um, These are unquestionably the two best teams in the league – I think Connecticut is is just slightly under them. Yeah. Um, but I just hope we get treated to the final that we've all been waiting for, which is a series between these two teams and mm-hmm. see who's peaking in October. Uh, because Stewie said it last night, we like the way we're playing right now here in August. And uh, they, they have certainly... Uh, improve their chemistry. You mentioned John Paul Jones. She's been the real difference maker, in my opinion, uh, with what you said, attacking the glass and also defensively. And what I noticed last night was that JJ got in foul trouble and the Liberty withstood it. Because if yeah. you remember the last meeting in Vegas, the, the game after the Commissioner's Cup, JJ got in foul trouble and that's when the aces kind of pounced and, and they won that game. Um, Asia Wilson still played great last night. uh, But the rest of the, the Liberty cast, you know, they were able to withstand uh, those minutes without JJ on the floor. And then Stewie, like she was struggling to shoot earlier in the game Um, And this is the same thing that happened when uh, the Liberty played Connecticut not that long ago, struggling to shoot. But what happens in the fourth quarter? She closes like she still is able to, you know, have a major impact uh, on on the end of the game. And you mentioned it like Sab was like out of this world. I was like, (laughs) are you really going to chuck that three right now? Yes, you are. are. Um, But anyways, uh, just wanted to react to that a little bit because um, obviously these are the the two. Um, odds leaders in the clubhouse uh, to win the chip this year. And like you said, I hope we get to see them match up. But we do have a three-game slate tonight. Um, And interestingly, we're going to have to start taking into account uh, motivation at this point in the season because (laughs) we've already had a couple of teams officially eliminated from playoff contention. The Mercury, who um, prior to the season had like the longest – streak of making the playoffs and that is now done uh storm also eliminated but uh the mercury are playing the dream in atlanta atlanta is favored by eight and a half on FanDuel. that's at seven o'clock eastern on cbs sports network and the dream they need a win they've lost six of seven 
including to the fever on Sunday, which they probably should have won. So this line is a stay away from me. Um, I don't love it on either side. And while I'm not sure what to predict for the Phoenix Mercury, I do like Mariah Jefferson over three and a half assists uh, and minus 115. I think depending on where you look, um, it may move a little bit by tip off, but I think you're you're pretty much expecting it to remain in this area. Um, she'll be able to take over a depleted backcourt uh, that does not have Sophie Cunningham, Shea Petty. Diana Taurasi is questionable. So you may think, hey, wouldn't that help her scoring? Probably. But I think it'll also help her in the assist department because there will be more attention. She'll be able to find Brittany Griner on rolls, pick and pop situations, things of that nature. I think they'll be able to to find some success. And, you know, with Phoenix, somebody's going to have to get these points against the Atlanta Dream. And I think that she can facilitate her way to doing that. She's gotten just over three and a half assists in one of her last three games. However, she did reach this tally in eight straight before that. And I'm sort of looking at that as the barometer for me tonight to be like, okay, I'm going to play this at over three and a half assists uh, because she was on a roll getting to four plus. There were some six, seven assist games in there and then has come back down to earth. Uh, there was one assist game, uh, one assist game recently uh, that probably wasn't great. But I think that over a 25, 26, 27 minute span, which is probably, you know, how much she's going to play tonight, more or less. I think you should find your way to four assists. Um, I'd be a little surprised if she puts together a streak of after getting four plus assists in eight straight games, Mm -hmm. going to just doing that one in four times. So I'm just sort of playing the probabilities there and being like, okay, with all the guards out, um, you know, she'll be able to find these sort of passing lanes. And uh, I'm looking at, uh, in turn, maybe I'm looking at Brittany Griner over on points. You know what I mean? As a result of that, because she's, you know, there's going to be a lot of attention paid to her as well, but she's going to have to load up on the scoring because somebody's going to have to on this Phoenix Mercury team, given all the injuries, and especially if Diana Taurasi remains out because she's questionable as of this recording. Right, and the good thing is, even if DT does play, I think that still helps. Uh, yeah. You know, helps this prop. Um, it's not an outrageous number, to your point, for her to get to four. Um, and as far as the the spread is concerned, you know, you said that you're staying away. And I, I feel the same way because um, while the Mercury are depleted and the Dream have all the motivation in the world, what I've been seeing on the court from the Dream, I'm not, I'm not confident in backing them. Like I'm not Agreed. confident in, I'm not going to bet on them. Do I think they're going to win? Yes. Um, eight and a half is mm. like, I don't love, I don't love that number. Like I feel like they could easily win by five or six and I'm just not confident enough in them right now. And, you know, Tanisha Wright has said like this team needs to grow up. Um, They are at home. So, uh, you know, like I said, should they win? Absolutely. But I, I, I'm just not confident enough. So, all right, let's, let's look to the next game that we have as well. We got the Lynx at Mystics. Uh, Washington is favored by six and a half. That's at seven Eastern on NBA TV. I'm excited about this game. Um, Mystics are coming off a win over the Aces. So that was, that was a big deal. Um, Mm -hmm. The Lynx most recently got smoked by the Liberty, but we know that the Liberty are kind of surging right now. Um, And again, these are two teams with a lot at stake. Uh, I think this could be a pretty good game. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but it's not a game that I, another, it's not a game, again, that I feel really confident in betting. Me neither. Um, because I actually looked and I was like, huh, Lynx plus six. That That's yeah. an interesting number. But also yeah. uh, Washington, a little bit more of a rhythm uh, as of late. Um, in terms of props for this, I do have one that I like. Uh, at plus odds, actually. Um, we, we talked about last time I was here, my love for Kayla McBride, um, just as a a catch and shoot threat Mm -hmm. as a constant mover on offense. Right. And as somebody who like, I enjoy the way she plays the game. Uh, I'm looking at her over two and a half threes at plus one Oh six. Now this is one that, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a $100 better. I'm 
anyway, but mm-hmm. it's not something I would put a hundred dollars on. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not even a fifty dollar better if we're being honest. But Kayla <laughs> McKee, like her, yeah, look, man, I don't hey, I'm Puerto all, Rican. It's all relative. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm cheap. I ain't trying. To, I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to spend that much money. Uh, I place bets. Like I got 28 World Cup bets yesterday, or or the day before, or whatever. But like, none of them were for like 50 dollars. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so Kayla McBride. Uh, I do have her at over two and a half threes. Um, against the Mystics. Um, four threes in back to back games before just getting one three against the Liberty on Saturday in that game you mentioned. Um, yeah. where the Liberty beat them. And I felt like that was more of an anomaly. And I mean, the Liberty are the Liberty. <laughs> like part of the thing, like they are, they're as great as they are offensively. Part of why they are who they are is defensively. They're able to, you know, shut down some of these opponents as well. And, you know, the Lynx offense has not been absurdly consistent this year, we'll say. But Kayla not McBride, K- yeah, Kayla McBride. Um, I see why it's plus odds, though, because getting to 3-3 is like there have been a lot of bigger uh, performances that she's had where she's getting to like 17 18 points with just two threes mm. some free throw shooting volume um you know doing some work in the mid-range getting downhill a little bit but ultimately i do like her three-point prop i think that she can get to three tonight i also think she can get to over 14 and a half points but that's you know minus 128 when i saw it sure. um which you know if you think she's gonna get 15 plus i can go right ahead absolutely Right. Um, but I wanted a little bit more value going for the threes, but it doesn't have to be an either or situation. You could just play both and see what happens. I also um, know that Natasha Cloud is questionable as of this. Um, Chrissy Tolliver, I believe, is also questionable. So uh, that should help matters as well. If, if Chrissy is uh, questionable, that's actually a good sign for <laughs> for uh, yeah. it's because she's hasn't played like all season um that's per espn's uh injury report i'm not i'm not saying it's updated or what this that and the third but we know that she's been you know exactly and that's neither here nor there but um i think uh for mcbride it's it's definitely tempting because you know that the mystics are going to focus on nafisa right anytime the links play anybody like the defensive game plan starts with nafisa so McBride has done a really good job of sort of finding her opportunities. And she's a big reason why the Lynx are even in the playoff race. And when they've had success this season, she's been a big part of that. So um, I like it. I, I'm i excited for this one. Like I said, I'm excited just to see the Mystics mostly healthy. Like, yeah. I mean, Cloud was kind of like the, the constant force. So I know she's questionable, but, um, but I mean, some of the other key players, obviously, you know, Della Don and Ariel Atkins and Shakira Austin, just to see them back. It's, it's going to make for a much more interesting postseason to have them mostly healthy. Um, and again, you know, I mentioned this on our, our last pod on Friday, like f- four through nine in the standings is totally, you know, within a game or two of each other, every team. Yep. So All of these teams that that we're talking about, if they're in the playoff hunt, like these are really, really important games and they're going to be playing hard and you're going to get competitive basketball. So uh, we got one more on tonight and it's the sky at Sparks. Uh, LA is favored by two and a half. That's at 1030 Eastern on CBS Sportsnet. Um, So here we are again, motivation on both sides. The Sparks lost their last game to the sun that snapped a six game win streak. The sky I noticed, although they've dropped six of eight, they only lost to the aces by seven and the sun by six, you know, so I feel like they're in a lot of close games and that's why you see this, uh, this spread, what it is. Um, But uh, yeah. Is there anything that caught your eye about this game? You know, I tried. (laughs) <laughs> real, like <laughs> I tried because <laughs> I looked I looked at the props for this game and, and this is not a knock on like the players at all by the way I just just the level of unpredictability for this right. one it's right. like is Kalia Copper gonna go over 16 and a half points that was the first thing that's the first thing listed and I was just kind of like I thought mm-hmm. about it and I was like all right let's see what else is out here right yeah we had Elizabeth Williams this is one that I I, I, I kind of like but I'm not super confident in okay um with 
you know, there are some injuries she could take advantage of. And we're kind of in somebody's got to get these points territory yeah. uh, as it relates to Elizabeth Williams, where she's gotten over 11 and a half at three of her last four. Her prop is for 11 and a half tonight. Um, but she only got 11 and a half in three of the previous 11 games. So I'm kind of like, Ugh, I don't know about that. Um, yeah. Looked at Neka Gwumake, who, I mean, if I'm looking at a Sparks bet, my default this season, or at least later in the season, has been Neko Gumake points over, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, she'll hit a decent amount of the time, um, or at least when I play it, a pretty good amount of the time. Before that, it was Jordan Canada assists, which I also gave a look, six mm-hmm. and a half, and that's, I think, plus 100 right now, plus 110, depending on where you look. And even that, I was like, man, there have been two or three instances a season where I've taken a Jordan Canada over six and a half assists and she gets to six or five and a half assists she gets to five so i'm kind of like (laughs) and i love her game one of my favorite point guards probably in the w right now but at the same time like i don't know so for this one i kind of just throw my hands up and i'm like look those are the ones that i were considering yeah um i gave i gave yeah yeah i gave courtney williams a look at over ten and a half points because that did work out for me last time i played it but she can be a little inconsistent <laughs> right for my liking right so i i i say all that to say people this yeah. this may be a stay away for me yeah. um but well, I, I would say watch the given some options. yeah i would say those those are some options that i like uh but i would say watch the game and enjoy yourself <laughs> yeah and so here's what i just realized i don't know if the line literally just moved while we were recording this but so now i'm seeing sky plus four and a half instead of plus two and a half and and you know maybe some money is coming in on the spark side um but i would be interested i'm not 100 percent sold yet but i would be interested on maybe sky plus the points because i do expect a little bit of a you know, I, I, I expect a competitive close game and they have played a lot of close games lately. So that's something I'm going to be, I'm going to be deciding here. I think <laughs> in, the, in the next few minutes, I might, I might uh, lean that way. Um, but look, we're two weeks out from playoffs. Uh, we talked about it. There's a lot of playoff spots up for grabs. Seating is up in the air for the most part. Um We've seen we've seen how the se- season series played out between the Aces and Liberty. Yeah, you know who's going to be peaking at the right time. It's going to be crazy interesting. You know, can Connecticut maybe surprise some folks? Can some other teams, like a healthy Mystic squad, for instance, um, surprise or, or catch a team off guard? I'm definitely excited to see that. Um, one programming note: um, we got another show Friday because we've been doing Tuesdays and Fridays throughout the summer. Uh, but starting in September, so next week we'll go back to once a week. It's going to be every Tuesday, um, so stick around for that. Make sure you follow us. I uh, want to say thank you to Brian for joining us once again on Buckets, and also a reminder to keep an eye out for Brian's article on Action Network today with some more um, prop info. Want to thank our sponsor as well, FanDuel. Thank you for listening to Buckets. If you haven't already, download the award-winning Action app. Also, rate and review this podcast. You can win Action Swag or a free subscription to Action Pro. Let's get Buckets.